Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 435 of Ink in Your Veins. I'm here today with Nicole Peeler, who is a dear friend of mine and just one of the most wicked, smart, and funny, hilarious people I have ever met in my life. Please stick around for me and her chatting about getting unstuck. The I'll keep this one short. The reason in the last episode I didn't know when the Kickstarter closed was it is so confusing. I now know that it closes in uh, one, two, three three days. But the reason it is confusing is that on my screen, I have a VPN on one part, uh, which is a, what does that mean? Virtual public network? I, I, uh, apparently, I don't know what it means. It means that you're hidden from where you are. I need to VPN in, make my computer look like it is pinging or getting information from inside the United States so that I can see the Kickstarter in US dollars, because I still can't convert the US to New Zealand dollars easily and quickly. So I like to see it in US dollars. And yesterday when I was recording, I had one screen in front of me that said it was closing in four days and another screen that said it was closing in three days. They both had the same timestamp on them, but they thought they were in different countries. So I have been very confused about when it is going to close. The Kickstarter is now, I do know this, it is closing on my Tuesday, which is probably your Monday. Most of the world, it will be Monday the 22nd when it closes. And I am putting this out on Saturday. So there's only two days left for this to go. So if you are interested in getting in on the Kickstarter, you probably already have. But if you were waiting until the last minute, as you know, many writers do, this is the last minute. And I'm going to tell you selfishly, if you ever think about maybe doing a Kickstarter, come join my Kickstarter just to see how I do it. If you hate the way I do it, then you will learn what not to do. But I hope you don't. I hope that if you join, that you love the way I am putting it out there. And I hope you love the book. That is the most important part. It has been such a joyful experience for me to talk about getting unstuck with so many incredible people. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to stop talking. Link is in the show notes. If you want to come support the Kickstarter or you know where to find it by now, please enjoy the amazing, beautiful, funny, hilarious, irreverent Nicole Peeler. Thanks for being here, everybody. I could not be more pleased to be here with my super dear friend, my special pal. Will you please share your name and your pronouns with us? Hi, I am um, Nicole Peeler and my pronouns are she, they. Thank you, Dr. Oh. Nicole Peeler. I would like to give a little bio for you. Um, Dr. She doesn't have this in here, but I'm adding it. Um, Dr. Nicole D. Peeler is an essayist and novelist, as well as a full professor of English at Seton Hill University. Just got approved for full professorship there they direct the mfa in writing popular fiction nicole lives in pittsburgh although they're often wandering nicole nikki my darling it's so good to see Hi. you um i was just looking back and i don't think i've ever had you on the podcast i've always been like holding you in reserve for the podcast <laughs> and i've never had you but real briefly how we met we were at a writing conference i don't know 12 or 13 or 14 years ago, something like that, maybe longer. 2009, 2010. Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. And I was with um, my, my two pals, Sophie and Julie, and we saw Nikki and we were like, we are going to get her. And then we got <laughs> you. We just said, you're our friend now. Come sit with us. And we haven't let you go ever since. So welcome to the show. Right now we're doing these little episodes talking about my new book, Unstuck, An Audacious Hunt for Happiness and Home, where I moved around the world um, because I realized that I had gotten myself to exactly where I wanted to be, and I felt completely stuck, even mm. though I had done it to myself. And now you know I, would love to hear you. <laughs> I would love to hear you talk about that. Can you tell us about a time perhaps where you felt stuck of your own making? Yeah, so I have... Um... I'm actually also, my friend and I are doing a podcast, which is very different, um, on, um, which called is called Neck Deep, the, Neck Deep in the Dick Sand. And it's, it's about fantastic. like all this, oh, thank you. It's about like all the systemic isms that we don't understand or perfect or like, um, 
working on us at all times. And this season we're doing perfection. And I'm talking a lot about this and that. So it's front and center in my mind. Yes. I've been reading a bunch of books around this topic and what does perfection have to do with this? Might you be asking? Um, For me, I was raised to be perfect, (laughs) which is also another way of saying good and pure and productive and people pleasing, lots of peas. Patriarchy is in there. Patriarchy. (laughs) 100 percent um so I've had a number of these where I worked for a thing and then I got the thing and they were big things right um degrees book deals jobs and oops sorry let me turn off all of my devices um so I The biggest one for me was definitely tenure. And in the past, a lot of the things that I got either naturally required or facilitated big moves. So this is where I think my story is kind of um, like the other side of the coin from yours. I you know, moved from Illinois to Boston when I I was 18 and then from Boston to Spain and then Spain back to Boston and then Boston to Edinburgh, Scotland and then Edinburgh, (laughs) Scotland to Louisiana, obviously. (laughs) Natural move. (laughs) Natural move. And then from Louisiana to where I live now. Um, and so kind of big life changes have been a huge part of my development and they often came alongside major coups like getting your PhD you know get getting the job moving to Scotland right or whatever um moving to Louisiana so I was always reinventing myself in my mind (laughs) right I was looking forward to that reinvention um and I was a lot younger right when you made your move you have done all the years of therapy, you have done all the thinking, you have done all the living. I was sort of reactive in my Mm -hmm. move, right? Um, These were not, these were not entirely active choices in the sense that I had to get a job. So where I ended up was where I moved. Mm -hmm. um there was a obviously getting the job part was active but then I just ended up somewhere and I was like oh now I'm a Louisianan what does that mean like who's this Nicole (laughs) and um it wasn't until I hit tenure that I was like this is the apotheosis of everything I've ever worked for yes because tenure says Mm -hmm. I am not going and you can't make me yeah, it's golden handcuffs, right? Yeah. And it's hard to get. Like I'm I've been very I've worked really hard and I've been very lucky to get where I am. Um and I had tied my tenure to sabbatical. So I was like living the dream. I was going from Oakland and New Orleans to Rhode Island, like just all over the place. And I was miserable because I'd run out of ladder, right? <laughs> All of that productive, people-pleasing, good, like, create your worthiness worthiness through perfection. Um, Had to, like, run out. Like, what was I going to do? And for me, that was, like, the second time when I realized in my life that the call was coming from inside the building. (laughs) Like none of these, because part of partly because of stories I'd been raised with and had internalized, I was always waiting for something external to complete me, whether it was a person or an opportunity or an adventure, like something else was going to come in and give me focus. And it had, right? 
um, grad school had come along, jobs had come along. Yeah, um, I, I would say, I, I would <laughs> I would just say to that language, they had come along, but that is because you were looking for them. Grad school did not come and knock on your door and say, we think you'd be a perfect candidate. You were still out looking for that outside the house. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but there was a level of, that was also kind of externalized thinking, right? Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I wasn't just going to grad school. I was also going to, <clears throat> excuse me, because a lot of, sorry, my voice is killing me. Um, a lot of the ways I went about these things wasn't necessarily about like the best place to go to school. It was like, I want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so like I yeah. applied to Boston colleges. Yeah. I only applied to UK schools for grad school. Like there was an element yeah. of, like, of like, this is going to be a thing and I'll be a totally different person in this place. Right. Um. So yeah, the call was coming from inside the building and I realized that I had to learn how to be whole where I was, right? Because I actually really love where I am and there's a lot of reasons why I should love where I am. Um, and I couldn't, all the places that I also know I would be happy, I couldn't move to because I can't transport my college. Right, and right. Um, I do love my job or they're just, you know, wildly expensive, right? Like I would have loved to move out to California with you guys, but there was just no, yeah, <laughs> we don't, we don't know how we did it for so long. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my story. So then this beautiful journey into becoming who we really are in the place where we stand has been something that has been so inspiring for me to stand next to you while you're doing this and while I'm doing this and while we're doing this. Um, what has been, what are, what have some of the most useful tools been for you to be able to stand in that place or to learn I mean, the how? First one, the first one was definitely therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm therapy. I've done all sorts of therapy. I'm just starting with a new therapist who's doing EMDR therapy. EMDR uh, is life changing. That's what I'm, that's what I've heard. And that's what Seriously. I'm excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Therapy. Um, a lot of it too has been what we talk about in neck deep in the dick sand. Like, it's, and this has gone hand in hand with my therapy is like figuring out the stories that I tell myself that aren't mine or, you know, that have never served me and figuring out what I've really wanted and needed versus what I thought mm -hmm. I wanted and needed. I'm spitballing here, but do you think that writers are especially good at telling ourselves stories because we are storytellers? I feel like I'm so good and I'm, I'm the first person I will fool. I don't know how we're not all in cults. <laughs> I don't Honestly. listen. I don't, I would not go to a church that like I had a friend one time who invited me to go to a church because she thought it was funny that they were a cult and she, she wanted to go so we could like laugh and titter, which number one, not cool. Number two, I can't go. I would be immediately indoctrinated. I'd give them all my money. I would sign right up. That's why I listen to all those cult podcasts. I'm obsessed. Yes. I'm doing my the, true crime. I'm not. Lo like, love has won. I'm watching right now. Loving it. Um, if a serial killer wants to get me, he's going to get me, right? Like, <laughs> I need to know how to not join a cult because that is yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. So back uh, to tools. So we've got therapy. Yeah. Unpacking all the things that aren't really ours that we carry. So especially, I think, for anyone raised female. Yeah. Do you have any favorites of those? Oh, so many around. So I'm, um, I just finished this book. Our uh, Best Behavior by, who's the author? Elise it is, Lowenin. it is by the former chief content editor or chief content officer, whatever, of Goop. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Buying, one clicking. 
yeah she um and she basically there's so many ndas i'm sure like so she can't say a lot yeah but clearly like she has come to jesus about like, <laughs> the industry that she was a part of and it's not a perfect book um but i actually really enjoyed it um and it's a great gateway book into this idea that like we've just been cut off so from ourselves so in our first season of the podcast we talk about anger and how like so many of us if you were raised female you've just been cut off from your anger meanwhile like anger is how we create and police boundaries <laughs> which is why none of us have any fucking boundaries interesting right. that was taken away from us right yeah right um so in that book she talks about like a lot of the cases she makes is for how we've been systemically cut off from desire right from envy because so basically she takes like it's this how the seven deadly sins of the Ooh. price we pay so it's kind of a buzzfeedy listically vessel Here right? for it. the seven deadly sins but she makes a good case and she talks about how things like envy are really like never be envious actually envy is like a great compass when we feel that twinge of envy love that we need to go scratch someone's eyes out we need to say, oh, she has something I want, mm -hmm. right? How can I get what I want? And we've been cut off from knowing what we want. We've been cut off from desire. We've been cut off from hunger. Hell yeah. We've been cut off from so many things that are so important. And all of this in the long run has cut us off from joy, right? And knowing ourselves. So you are a what... person who learns about herself. You learn about yourself. That's what you do. And then you share it in this gorgeous, glorious manner. There's, There's been so many times where I've just been chatting to you and you'll say something in such a frank manner. Oh, like, and it blows my mind because these are things we should all be thinking. What is the thing? Um, what if I, what if I chose to be happy? Mm. Like that, I remember you, is that, is that, that the was, right that phrase? Was, yeah, that this yeah. was like a big, this was like, I feel like my journey has been like little stair steps. Like, I think of it in terms of an escalator because I can't stop thinking of like improvement. <laughs> so we could also look at it this way, right? Yeah. But, um, in a circle. Yeah. Just realizing how much of my, the way I thought about things was always trying to make them better. Right. So I was always future thinking or I was living in the past with regret. And I could never just be in the present. Like, why can't I just be happy? <laughs> like, why can't I just enjoy this? Or like, why can't I just be content? Why can't I just, you know, I would find myself feeling like actively happy. Um, there was recently a ketamine ceremony with a shaman. <laughs> nice. I like, I was like, this feels great. And then I was like, I felt like that that part of me was just like, but I'm trying to get like put a leash was just like, okay, yeah, but where's the enlightenment? Like I came here for the enlightenment. Like, <laughs> waiter, <laughs> enlightenment. And I'm like, you are having a funny time. Just enjoy this. So it was Which very is huge. Yeah. Ironically, that was the that was the waiter. <laughs> There, there was this, uh, there was this moment actually in Unstuck, and I'm not even doing this as a product placement, but we had done this uh, five day hike, and I had gone basically for the meditative, um, ep epiphanic nature of it. Right, I was just, I couldn't wait to have the epiphanies on the trail, and then I realized on like the fifth day that I had had none, and I'd been really frustrated about it. But what I'd had was complete immersion in the moment. I was constantly thinking about where to put my foot, where to put my stick. How does my foot off. feel? How does my back feel? And I was, I was present. That was the epiphany. I had been fully present that whole time. And uh, yeah. Yeah. But I would have called the waiter over had I. <laughs> All right. My, my dear friend, neck, neck deep in the dick sand is the podcast. I'm so glad that you're doing this because you're able to share what you have learned and I'm so excited for it. And where else can we find you if you would like to connect? Um, NicolePeeler.com. I also write for Medium. Um, and and you write in like the, the you are the contracted 
You are a contracted writer, specialty feature writer over at Medium too, and you do great pieces. You've got to read Nicole's pieces. Thank you. Oh, and you also have a brilliant um, newsletter, which I'm sure that people can get to from your website. Is that right? Absolutely. And um, I also have some fantasy novels that you can still get on Kindle, even though they're out of print. (laughs) They're so good. They're so good. All right, my friend. Thank you for talking to us about getting unstuck. I really appreciate you. I love you. Love you too.